This is the introduction to Linux on the Cisco Network Academy and this is the first lab that's in chapter 5 and basically it's exploring features, shell variables, and able to make use of quoting. So there's nothing on this first 5.1 part so we're gonna go to 5.2 and we're looking at files and directories so it's basically just talking about the command line interface and just introducing this command line interface over here. And then it talks about the command options and argument format that we will be typing in here. And then it displays the ls command. And the ls command, when typed in, shows the current working directory. So we're in 5.2 now. If we do ls-l, we are going to get an extended version of this. I think this means list long and then it shows how many are in here. In 5.2.2 we are told that we can add arguments to the command and adding the location of a specific directory to the ls command will list information for that directory. And then it gives us this argument slash tmp to display information about files in the slash tmp directory. However for some reason when I do ls dash l and then slash tmp it says there's a total of zero so I don't know if I'm spelling something incorrectly I don't think I am just to make sure I'll do tnp there's no file here so I'm just gonna assume that I'm probably doing something wrong but we'll go to the next step which is 5.2.3 step 3 where we have the following command who am I which basically displays the username of the current user so if I type in who am I Currently, I'm the system administrator, as it says right here. Next, in 5.2.4, we are going to be displaying information about the current system. And to get the information about the current system, we just type out U name, and then we're Linux. So that's what it outputs. And then gives us a way to do the same thing, but different ways. So the first name is to get our host name, and it's going to display local host. The first way we can do this is using uname-n, and this will tell us that we are the local host, or we can do uname-node-name. And if we do dash dash node name and press enter, it'll be the same thing that'll give us local host. Next in 5.2.5, we have the pwd, which is the print working directory, and it basically just tells us the directory that we are currently in. In 5.3 command history, we're just told about the history that we have here and we can use the up arrow key or the down arrow key to go down and left and right keys to edit. We can also use the home and backspace and delete keys. If we type in history it will display all of our history and if we go to 5.3.1 we can call by using echo and if we type echo hi it will just output hi. If we type in history, we can see that our command is here. And so is our command that we just entered right here. If we type in date, it'll give us the date. And if we want to clear the screen, we can type clear. And that clears the screen. However, that does not get rid of our history, because if we type out of our history, it will be here again. For 5.3.2, if we type in history, we know it displays the entire history. If we type in history in a specific value, it will display the last n things, n being the value that we typed in. So if we have our history like this, and the last five things are these lines, and we type in history five, we're gonna see that it's going to give us the last four things actually, and then the command that we just passed in. In 5.3.3, to execute a command again, we just use an exclamation mark nine. So if we are to echo hi, and then we were to use our history, and we only want to view the last couple things, we can do three, and then we could see that line 59 we have echo high. So if we wanted to redo this, we would just have an exclamation point, and then 59. And this will print out echo high, so it'll give us high. 
5.3.4 is just talking about the up and down arrow keys again. 5.4 is about shell variables and how variables are used to store data. In 5.4.1, we are told that the echo command can be used to print text in the value of a variable and to show how the shell environment expands meta characters. We are told to type the following command and have it output the literal text. We'll use echo hello student. We can see that it types out hello student. Typing in history like this will give us our entire history. And by default, our history size is 1000. However, we can change this if we want. But first, we're just gonna print out our current history size. And to print something out, we have to use echo and then the dollar sign hist size in all caps. Once we have dollar sign hist size, we can press enter and it will give us the value of a thousand. So this is basically saying that our history can store a thousand things. In 5.4.3 step 3, we are told to type the following command to display the value of the path variable. We can clear this and then just do echo dollar sign path. And if we do this, we get our path. So we have all of the directory printed out. And we're told that the path variable is displayed by placing a dollar sign character in front of the name of the variable. The variable is used to find the location of commands. Each of the directories listed above are searched when you run a command. For example, if you try to run the date command, the show will look first for the command in the home system admin bin directory, and then in the user local sbin directory, and so on. Once the date command is found, the shell runs it. So it looks like all of these directories are separated by semicolons. And it looks through all of these directories to try to find our date. And if it finds the date command, it stops and it executes it. In 5.4.4, we're told to use the which command to determine if there is an executable file. In this case, named date that is located within the directory in the path value. So if we type in which date, we have this slash bin slash date. In 5.5 we have command types and it's basically just prefacing this section talking about how we will learn about four types of commands used in Linux. In 5.5.1 we are told that we can learn more about a command and look to see where it is from. We use the type command to do this. So if we do type and then what command, so we'll use cd, which is change directory, and it'll tell us it is a shell built in. Basically, that means it's part of the bash shell, an internal command. In 5.5.2 step two, we are told that external commands are stored in files that are searched by the shell. If a user types the ls command, then the shell searches through directories that are listed in the path variable to try to find the file named that is ls and execute it. So if we do type and then ls, it says it is aliased to ls dash dash color equal to auto, which is what it is in this example here. In 5.5.3, we can see the aliases in our current shell by using the alias command. So if we type in alias, for alias, it shows all of the aliases. In 5.5.4, we are told that the final command type is an executable program. These commands invoke programs installed on the system, which perform specific tasks. When a user types the vi command, the shell uses the path file to locate and execute these programs. So right now, our current directory is the user. So right now in here, our current directory is the outermost directory. So if we did ls, which lists everything we have, we have all of these things in here. If we wanted to try to find vi, we would do type vi. And this shows us that vi is in the user slash bin slash vi. So this is where it is. Now, if we wanted to move into this directory, we can do cd slash bin. So now we're going to be in the bin directory. And then it shows us we're in slash bin. If there's nothing here, it means that we're in the outermost directory. Now, if we do ls, we have a bunch of different things and it's totally different from what we had when we just did this ls when we were in the outermost folder. If we clear this, we're still in the slash bin directory after we cleared everything. And the way to go back to the outermost layer is just to do cd. And if we do cd, it takes us back. 
5.6 talks about quoting. There are three different types of quotes. We have the single quote, the double quote, and back quote. Each of these have special features. The single quote prevents the shell from interpreting or expanding all special characters. Often single quotes are used to protect a string from being changed by the shell so that the string can be interpreted by a command as a parameter to affect the way the command is executed. Double quotes stop the expansion of global variables like the asterisk, question mark, and square brackets. Double quotes do allow for both variable expansion and command substitution. Next is the back quote. Back quotes cause command substitution, which allows for a command to be executed within the line of another command. In addition to quotes, we have the backslash, and the shell provides a way to block the interpretation of just a single character called escaping the character. To escape the special meaning of a shell meta character, the backslash character is used as a prefix to that one character. So if we wanted to escape for a single instance, we would put a backslash right in front of it. For 5.6.1, we are told to execute the following command to use back quotes. So if we want to execute a string, we would, of course, use echo, and then we would write out our string. So we would write out today is, and then we want to write out the date. However, if we just type date like this and we print it, it's just going to print the entire string. It's not going to change it to how it wants the actual date printed out. So to get the actual date, we need to do echo today is and then surround date with back quotes. So these are usually in front of the one on a keyboard. So we would have one right here and one right here surrounding it. If we have our back quotes surrounding date, we would say today is Monday, June 28th, and then the exact time. Another way to do this is by using the dollar sign. So we could do echo today is like this and then instead of doing back quotes we can do a dollar sign and surround what we want in parentheses like this and then type out what we want we want date so we'll just do date and then it prints out today is and then the exact date in time a benefit of using this dollar sign and then parentheses is because it's easier to see against these back quotes because single quotes look like this and they're very similar to back quotes, so it's just a distinction. If we wanted to print out back quotes, we would have to make sure that they're printed out as a string. So I will clear this, and then if I wanted to type echo, this is the command date, and we want the actual date command. And then we know the date command can be used by using back quotes like this. Well, if you wanted to print the back quotes along with it, we would need single quotes like this, and then it would print it out like this. If we wanted to do this and not use single quotes, if we wanted to use something else because single quotes look super similar to back quotes, what we could do is change our single quotes and our back quotes. So instead of having the format look like this, we are going to switch it and we can actually just get rid of these and put back only our back quotes. And then before our back quotes, every single time we're going to have a backslash. So we have backslash and then our back quote and then a backslash and then our back quote and what this is doing is the backslash is making sure the character right after it is a part of the string if we press enter it's gonna say that this is the command date which is what it should and it shows us this in this example these two ways are the only way for it to print out the backslash quotes like this if we use double quotes, it would not make these back quotes into part of the string. We can try that by doing echo, and then we'll just replace these and add in our back quotes, but surround it this time with double quotes. And if we surround it this time with double quotes, just like in the example, if we press enter, we can see that it does not make the back quotes part of the string and it prints it out as if it were a command. So then it just prints out the actual date and time. Double quotes are used differently, and they're used to print out symbols like this asterisk or a question mark or an exclamation mark. So if we test these in the console, we can do echo to print something, and then D star. It shows the desktop documents download, so the things that start with D. If we wanted to just print out D, we would surround this in double quotes, press enter, and we can see that we get out a D star. 
In 5.7 control statements, we have three different types of statements. We have the semicolon, which separates things on multiple lines, allowing us to have a bunch of commands on the same line, as long as we have a semicolon to separate each command. We also have the and and characters, making an and statement. And this is saying that if the command on the left side of the ands is successful, then the command to the right of it will also be executed. And if the command on the left fails, then the command on the right is not executed. Next we have the or statement, which allows conditional exception. When commands are separated by the or statement, only if the left command fails does the right command execute. In 5.7.1, we are just showing how the semicolon typed in for each command is allowing us to have multiple commands on the same line. We have echo hello. We can separate this with a semicolon and do echo Linux and then echo student. When I spelled echo wrong right here, I accidentally included a squiggly line for some reason, but if we get rid of that error, we type hello Linux and student. In 5.7.2, we have these three commands separated by semicolons. However, the first one does not execute properly and only the next two execute. And the reason why the next two can execute even if the first one executes falsely is because these are all separate commands. So if we have echo false, echo not, and echo conditional, if we have all of these with echoes in front of them, they're all written correctly. We can see that they all execute. However, if we go back up and we take out this echo and we execute it, we can see that not and conditional do not ex get executed. Now, if we go back here and take out the echo, let's say in this one, we are only going to execute false because it stops once it has an error. Not an error, but a command not found in this instance. For 5.7.3, we are using the logical and. So this logical and only executes the right statement if the left statement executes properly. This one executed properly, so did this one, and so did this one. However, if we do this, but take out this middle portion, then we're only going to print out start. And then it says command not found because um, we print out start using echo, but we don't have an echo for this string right here. And so since this is not true, it's false, that means this never gets executed. Now we're using the or statement to print out these separate commands. If the first command is false, then the second command will execute. However, if the first command is true, the second command will never execute. So we will try using false, our or statement, with an echo fail or. And this will print out fail or because our first command is false. If we change this to our first command being true, and then kept the or echo fail or, and we printed this out, this echo fail or would never execute because our left command is true.